So this is the first container building in Connecticut. The second project is the second container building in Connecticut. When I say first and second, the first or second legal buildings. Whether people have container structures in their backyard, we don't know about. This is the largest, as far as I know, the largest shipping container, residential shipping container building in the country. Comprised of 27 containers, which allows us a total of six 1,080 square foot apartments. In the United States, building with containers may be about less than 10 years old. I'd say around 2006, we started seeing there were a lot of concepts online. Concepts, renderings, very few buildings. In Europe, the Dutch, who have been the masters of this construction, probably close to 30 years. Then there's the US military, and we have no idea what they're doing. So there are no, we, there are no code books. There are no, I don't think it has anything to do with the containers. It's just the fact that it's an entirely steel structure. Any of the typical buildings are traditionally once we go taller, they're steel clad with something else. Here we're doing a building, which is a steel frame building clad in steel, which we don't have a building code or a building type that works for that. And was it just a way to try to build cheaper, faster? We don't like to use the word cheaper because that signifies that we're, we're, we're skimping. We're not skimping. It allows us to build a structure that is very strong at, we will get to a fraction of the price with time, but it allows us to build a structure quickly and efficiently. Okay. I've had to develop an entire system of coding. So every staircase has a code on it. These staircases were in the containers when we transported them. And then we lifted them in place. In the sequence of how we put the containers down, different how we would normally design, you just call it something and then the contractor deals with it. But with dealing with the, the crane people and the logistics, every container has its own number. Every staircase has its own number. Fourth floor, second pick boulevard so that they know which direction to orientate the container when they're loading it into the truck. Wow, very modular then. That's the goal. The goal is to prefab as much as possible. While we're setting the boxes, we're still painting, we're working off site painting the boxes before we get to the site, installing the windows. We set the building in stages. So every floor takes eight containers. The third and fourth floor is eight plus three, so it's 11 containers. We set the first floor in five hours. I didn't like how it sat, so we came back the following week with the crane and relocated the building. We actually shifted the entire building, rotated the entire building by two inches. It's got to go towards the street. Another three inches towards the street. Perfect. We Initially, we're going to cover the building, but then needed to allocate funds in a different place. So then we decided to celebrate the idea of the container. These boxes are between 12 to 18 years old. They have been banged. 
We use the same type of paint that you paint merchant ships with. The idea being that you never have to paint it. So this is gonna be six two bedroom, two bath apartments. So this is uh, one of our apartments. Large living room right off the entrance. Two bathrooms, a full kitchen. We have a shower in one bathroom. So they're full bathrooms, a little compact, but full bathrooms. And then in the other bathroom, we have a uh, bathtub. So you don't see any container when you're in the house? If we could have allowed more container, we would have. And that's uh, this careful dance that we're learning how to do with the, um, with the fire marshal. We've had a bit of a battle with the fire marshal. This, this is a one hour fire rated wall. We're planning on building a small scale version of this and burning it. Why? So we can set precedent. So we can figure out what, there's no research. No one has any research on what we're doing. The US government has the most amount of research and they don't share. of the Long Island Sound, which is really nice. But we're really happy with the fact that we could go up so high that we can get the waterfront views. Could you go up as high as you wanted with containers? We can go up to eight stories without a problem. Potentially higher. But initially, these container doors were fully functional until we had to put a roof in. It's cool, the, the history about that, that's in a container. I mean, you look at it and you think of the doors, at one time being at sea and now it's up here on top of a roof in New Haven. I personally like the look of containers, but I can understand through dealing with local politics in the neighborhood, when they see a container, one of the first things that comes into their, their minds are industrial metal boxes. But as they see what we're doing there, and as more people around the country start doing container projects, precedents get set. house and then there should be oh, she So this is the first container building in Connecticut. The container goes all the way behind this faux facade. The cool thing is that we actually blend in with the neighborhood in a way that, like we argued with the building department, they wanted us to cover half of the back with this stuff. And all it really matters is about a 45 degree angle from down there. The porch is on either side, they block. My neighbors don't notice it at all. When we initially set the building, you noticed. Until we clad the front, you noticed. And that roof came in as a one piece. It was prefabricated offsite and they brought it in and we picked it up and bolted it to the roof. We built this house based on that house because the absurdity of putting a mansard roof on that building, we felt gave us a, the leniency to do it here. This is my house. The parts of the wall that are solid are a container. So there's container in here, container in here, container in that wall. So again, you don't see containers. Very little. This is the only structure. This is three containers. One, two, and three. These are actually 45 foot containers. And so we have, this is a two bed, one bath. In the interior, we want it to look like a house. Again, we're, we're fighting. We're fighting people's conceptions. We're fighting the city. The upstairs, we're just cleaning up the space because we're about to uh, re-rent it. So the whole idea 
say, Plato's cave. If you start on the inside, you'll never know what it is until you get to the outside. We just took the doors, flipped them open. We delivered the containers with the doors that we could move, and it was actually a good thing because we loaded in all the materials through here. Things that you don't think about. Um, when you do traditional construction, you know, the walls are open. So you can slide material in through the walls as they're going up. Here, we had to slide everything in through here. Other companies have tried to reinvent the wheel and weld and use different types of fittings. We just use the same fittings they use on container ships. And we just use these, these pins. The container sits on it, we lock it in place, and that is not going anywhere. No point in making something complicated when it can be simple. These are the pins. So this gets set in a container. The container above sits here. Well, it goes down to here, and then we lock it. So we lock them with these, and we hold them together with these, which are called bridge fittings. So it's a real mechanical fit. Yep, no welding. We weld the building to the foundation. If you Google shipping container disasters, you will see ships that are totaled, and you'll have eight containers hanging. So you'll, the stack will all be this way, and you'll have one con row of containers hanging out. So that's where we thought, like, if it works, why reinvent it? We're standing underneath each of these where there's 30 tons above us. These things are built to last. Oh, this building will outlast the neighborhood. The containers are built out of Corten steel. Corten steel, it acts like copper. That if it gets wet, it oxidizes. The type of oxidation, which is a type of rust, it's just giving itself a patina. Think of an old car. It rusts, you can flake it off, and you can ultimately get through. When a container rusts, it just gives itself a sheen, and it won't go anymore. It's auto-protecting itself. Over there, that's the entire heating system for the upstairs. This is the heating and water for the upstairs. This apartment, it's a thermos. That's what a container is, essentially a thermos. If it's adequately in insulated, these walls are R30, R32. Most of the money went in insulation. It's more expensive. It's less expensive than traditional. Right now we're probably 25 to 30 percent less expensive. But where you save in cost, it's, it's all technical. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that you read on the web is not true. You can't build this house for $50 a square foot and get it approved. You just can't. We built this first project as full-scale R&D. So the finishes on this floor are different than the finishes downstairs. Here we put a control strip underneath the concrete. It's a controlled expansion joint, so once the concrete settles, that crack forms naturally. And downstairs, we actually cut the expansion joint into the concrete. Here, we fared the, the, the beams together, so they look like one. And downstairs, we left them exposed. I mean, the more people I teach and the more people start understanding what we do, collectively our process will become easier. I think more people are trying to do it. The building department is slowly loosening up. I hope that we can start sharing information by our, us sharing information of all of us who are doing these types of things then we can start getting over these municipal issues.